In this video, we'll be going over the rules of Xiangqi, also known as Chinese chess. Xiangqi is a popular board game, also descended from the same board game as Western chess, and developed its own unique rules and pieces. It's still popular today and widely played in China and Vietnam, where it's called Ko Tuong. Xiangqi is normally played on a 9x10 board where pieces are placed on the intersections, not squares. There are two special regions on the board, the palace, which are these 3x3 areas marked with an X, and the river, which splits the board in two. Here are the pieces of Xiangqi. They are typically written in Chinese characters. For this video though, we'll use international piece sets available on PyChess because there are plenty of videos and websites out there that can teach you with Chinese characters. Keep in mind that these symbols are designed to stay true to the original piece names rather than use Western symbols, as this is not a Western game. There are two sides to the board, red and black. Red typically goes first. The goal of the game is to checkmate the enemy king, just like in Western chess. There are additional rules that I'll go into more detail later on. So let's go into the pieces. Starting with the chariot, the chariot is exactly like the rook in Western chess. It can move any number of spaces, left, up, right, or down. The next piece is the horse. The horse is similar to the western knight, except there is one difference. It can be blocked. So the way to think about the horse is that it first moves forward by one square, and then diagonally left or right. So it ultimately makes a Y shape, and it does this in any direction. So again, forward this way, and then diagonally. It could go also backwards, and then diagonally and to the side and diagonally. So for practical purposes, in this situation, red cannot attack black, but the black horse can attack the red horse. Next we have the elephant, and the elephant starts in these corners of the board. The elephant is somewhat similar to the bishop in chess, except much more limited. It can only move two spaces diagonally. Additionally, the elephant can't cross the river, so once it's here, it can't go forward. And because of that, the elephant can only go to seven spots on the board. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's it. It's a very weak piece, but it's mainly used for defense. Uh, and when combined with the other elephant, they're very strong at defending each other. Now there's also a very similar piece to the elephant, which is the advisor. And you start with two of these over here in the palace. The advisor can only move one space diagonally. That's it. So it can only move five spots and it cannot move past the palace. So it's only bound by these five spots. Again, it's a very weak piece, but when combined with it, another advisor, they protect each other pretty well. Then we have the king, which is also interchangeably known as the general, which is a direct translation of its Chinese name. The king can move exactly one square orthogonally in any direction within the palace. So it can move like this. So the king can move into any of these nine positions within the palace, but can't go further than that. Now there's also a special rule of the king. Uh, so I'll pull this king out here. And that's that these two kings cannot face each other. This is called a flying general's rule. And a piece must be in between, otherwise it would be an illegal move. So for example, in this position, this red king cannot move to the left because this black king directly sees it. The next piece we have is the cannon, which is a very interesting piece unique to Xiangqi. Uh, the cannon moves and attacks differently. It moves exactly like a chariot, so again it can go any number of, of intersections orthogonally. So if this horse was there, this could only go up to there. However, to attack, the cannon needs a different piece in the way. So for example, to capture this horse, there needs to be a piece in between. For example, this horse, it could be allied or enemy pieces, and now this cannon can attack this horse. So it essentially jumps over the horse to attack this enemy piece. And then finally we have the pawn, also known as a soldier. We use these two terms interchangeably. The pawns start on these five 
intersections on the board, and they move very simply. They move both move and capture by going one space forward. This is not like the western pawn that attacks diagonally. Now these just go straight forward. So for example, to catch to capture this pawn over here, it just needs to go forward twice. Now the pawn is also affected by the river. Once it passes onto the other side of the river, like this pawn over here, it has the additional ability to move sideways one square as well. So now it can move like this. And this greatly increases its strength because now it has a lot more flexibility on the other side. Now keep in mind that once it reaches the other side, it does not promote like western chess, it's already done, and it's stuck to just moving left and right on this side. So ideally, you, you don't want to keep it to the last rank unless you need to checkmate that way. Alright, and now let's go over a few additional rules. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the goal of the game is to checkmate the other king. So I have a very simple problem over here. Let's put this chariot out here. How do you checkmate the king here? Well, it's simple. You just move the chariot over two spaces, and then now this chariot attacks the king, and the enemy king cannot move over here because as I mentioned before, that would violate the flying general's rule because there is an open file uh, between the two kings if it did that. So this king is in checkmate. Now what about stalemate? In western chess, stalemate is a draw, but that's not the case here. So, for example, we say we had this position here, and it's red's turn to move. If red did that, the king has nowhere else to go. It cannot go here because the soldier covers that. And it cannot go there because the enemy king covers that. And so it's in stalemate. In this case, because it cannot move anymore, it's a loss for the black pair, not a draw. Finally, there are additional rules about perpetual checking and perpetual chasing. What is perpetual checking? Uh, so for example, perpetual check, here we have check, king escapes, check, king escapes, check, king escapes, check, king escapes, that's perpetual checking. There are different rules on this, but in general the common theme is if you perpetual check, the player who is checking will lose the game. Similarly, there's another rule, so let me put this out here. So now this chariot threatens this cannon. So the, ch uh, the cannon moves away, the chariot chases, the cannon runs, the chariot chases, the cannon runs. And so this could keep on going back and forth, and this is perpetual chasing. But typically the player who is chasing loses the game. So that's it for the rules of Shanxi. Stay tuned for our next video where I'll talk about notation as well as some basic tips for beginners.